Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and here is the last tutorial in this series of the simple chess engine program that we are creating and I will be eventually providing a more advanced uh, chess engine. Um, I have cr already created much more advanced chess engines which use the bit boards and uh, iterative deepening and quiescent searches and all sorts of advanced things that you may or may not uh, understand at this point. But uh, for now, this is a very basic engine. We will not be uh, completing things such as en passant or castling. I would consider that uh, something that we would look at in an advanced engine, uh, primarily for the reason that they both require a look at history. Um, basically, when I uh, look at castling, I have to know if the rook or the king involved has ever moved in the past. Um, before knowing if it is possible to do a castle at any given moment. Same with Empassant. I have to know that the very last move was a specific pawn move, two down from the other side. Um, and so those are the reasons that uh, I consider them more advanced, but uh, feel free to implement them on your own time. So for this tutorial, we'll be focusing on a sort method. Uh, the alpha beta algorithm is uh, uh, searches the tree and it prunes uh, certain uh, nodes and certain lines of thought as you could imagine it and says, oh, don't look at this line. It's definitely not going to lead to anything good. Or do look at this line. It looks promising. And there are certain ways that you can sort the order of the moves that it looks at um, so that it's more likely to prune uh, more spots than not. And, and the more we can get it to prune, the faster our engine will be. And so the basic way that it prunes best is if it first looks at the best move to worst. If we can sort it best to worst, it will be the most efficient at pruning uh, unwanted lines of code. And so we can never fully know what the best move or the worst move is. If we knew 100% what the best move was, there'd be no point searching. We'd just make the best move right off the start. So it can only be a guess, but it can be an educated guess and better than just random. Right now, the sort order um, is the order that the uh, possible moves method generates. It first comes up with all pawn moves, followed by rook, knight, and so on. Um, a very basic way to sort the moves would be to reorder this. Perhaps first look at queen moves. Uh, next look at rook. I don't know. But you can order them in different ways and then there'll be a higher probability or a, a lower probability of uh, having the first move looked at being the best move. So we're going to come up with a method that will sort the moves. And it's definitely not true that the less lines of code you have, the slower the program will be. That can be true, but here is an example where we add a section of code which will greatly improve the code. And basically the reason is, is this extra line of code will let the engine uh, look through less lines because instead of repeating itself a thousand times, it might only repeat the alpha beta algorithm, let's say 50. That would be, of course, optimal, but uh, it might not be that dramatic. So. I added a couple lines of code right up at the top, um, which basically just time the move. Um, so just when it makes a move, when I select computer to start, it sets start time to the system time in milliseconds. And then when it comes up with a move, it gets an end time. And then it prints out the difference. And that's how long the engine took. And so this will be a comparison. We'll test how long it takes on my computer at the start, run this, make this new method, and test at the end. On each computer will be different, but the ratio between the two should be the same. So here you get 6.5. Um, that's actually faster than I expected. It's usually been right around the 7 mark. We'll try one more here. 6.7. So uh, we're getting a pattern. Um, at least six and a half seconds, though, is what it, it would look like. And it will, of course, vary from time to time. Um, also, when you test it before and after, don't 
open 50 programs in between the two um, because then the computer will be uh, bogged down on one and not the other, something unfair like that. So it's looking at about six and a half seconds would be the fastest I can see this uh, program running currently. So we're going to create this sort method, public stat, uh, static, um, we'll return a string. So we'll input the string of the moves and return the string. Uh, all right, if I can get my typing figures back, and we'll just call it sort moves. And we'll input the string as the default name of list. All right, so here's how we do it. Um, there are many different sort methods. Um, some are built into Java. Java has a default sort thing that takes an array and sorts it. So we could take these moves and, and sort them different ways. Um, there's if you look online, Wikipedia, wherever, you'll find that there's the bubble sort method and the quick sort method and all sorts of different ways to sort. And some are more efficient with short uh, lists and some are more efficient with long. Some take less memory resources, perhaps. Uh, others are better with numbers and others with words. I don't know. There's different uh, reasons to use different methods. And some are just terrible all around. Just don't use them. But for this sort method, we're not going to use any of them because sort methods are uh, specific to the purpose that they're being used for. And in this case, we're, only, we're not going to sort the entire list. We're only going to look for the best five or six moves and just sort them in correct order and leave all the other moves the same. And basically the reason is that we're p taking from the best to the worst, and if it truly is in the order of best to worst, the engine should never have to look at those last 90% of the moves, hopefully. And so there's no point sorting them, because the engine will rarely see them, and it would just be a waste of our energies to sort something that uh, rarely uh, uh, is necessary. So we have to come up with a new method. And as far as I know, there is no uh, no recognized um, famous method for sorting only a few select items in a list. So here is how I have come up with it. The first thing we're going to do is go through each move and come up with a rating on this is a good move or a bad move. We'll have to look at each move to know which is the best option. You've got to look at all the options first. So we create an array to do this. So it'll be an integer array, integer array, and we'll call it score, and we'll set it to a new int, and what's the length of this array? Well, it's the list dot length divided by five, because there's five characters per move in the list. So that's how many items there are. And we'll create a for loop. So we'll set a for int i equals 0. And then we'll make it i is less than list.length. Uh, list.length. And then i plus equals 5. Jumping by groups of 5. All right, so through this for loop, first thing we do is we make the move. Um, make move list dot, oops, dot substring. And then it would be i to i plus 5. Just like that. And then we'll come up with a rating for that board. And then we will undo the move. Now, how do we come up with a rating? Um, there are different ways. You can just count material. That would be a very fast way to get a rough rating of better or worse. You know, you make a move where you capture, that would be an improved material bonus. And so we would consider that excellent. Um, and a way, another way you could check the, the capture is that last character in our five move string is usually the piece that you capture. And so you could uh, uh, base your rating off of that. 
What we're going to do is a more accurate rating system, but of course, an accurate rating system at the expense of time. So we're actually going to call the rating system. So we're going to set the score, score at i divided by 5, and set it to equal to, and set it to negative, rating dot rating. And we won't worry about the, the two parameters. We're going to always set them to negative 1 and 0. So those will be static, makes us a little bit quicker in our evaluation there. All right. And that is it. So now we have a score array. Next thing we have to do is sort the list based on the score array. So what we'll do is we'll create two strings. We, of course, need a new string for the new list, but we'll divide it into two. We will have a string new list A. I'll just set that to a blank string. And new list B and set it to the same. Actually, let's see, we will set it to, ah, and I need this to be a comma for it to work. New list B and we'll set it to the initial list. So the way we will do it is we'll scan through for the best move and add it to new list A. Then we'll scan through second best move and add to new list A. So new list A will end up with five or six of the best moves. And then each time we come up with the best move, we'll remove that move from the new list B, which initially contains everything. So that the new list B contains everything but whatever's in new list A. And then we will, in the end, return new list A plus new list B. So I could already uh, put that in there, return uh, uh, return, there we go, new list A plus new list B. There we go. That is the end there. So now we need another for loop where we look, where we go through each one looking for the best move. So we'll start with the integer i equals zero again, and then i start out with less than 6, and i++. plus plus. All right. Now, some of you might already notice a problem. So I'll put a comment here. Um, first few moves only, um, because we're not scanning through every item in the list. What if the list has less than 6 items? then we shouldn't search six items. That would, of course, give us problems. Um, so what we have to do is be a little more specific. We have to say whichever is smaller, six or the length of the list. So what you do for that is math.min, and then pick six as the one item, and you'll pick the minimum of these two uh, doubles. List uh, yeah, list.length divided by 5. All right. And there's our big for loop. All right, in this for loop, what we will put in is int max equals negative and make it 1 million for now. And max location equals zero. So what we're going to do is go through each item and say uh, set max to the value of the score that we find if it's bigger than anything we've ever found before, which would be max. And then we will find, and then we'll set that to the max location. And we'll keep going till once we've gone through everything, max will be the biggest number and max location will be the biggest location. So Let's create this for loop. For int, this time we'll call it j, set it to 0, and then as long as j is less than, let's see, again it'll be list dot 
length, it's pretty much the same uh, sort of thing, list.length uh, divided by 5 to j++, plus plus. just like so. So going through each one, and then we have to say if the score of j is greater than max, so if this is a new best move possible, then max equals score of, and it would be j, I guess. And the next thing we have to also say is max location equals j. There we go. Now, we have a semicolon there to stop all the errors. So now we have the max location and the max move. So we set score for the max location equals negative and again one million. And the reason I do this is we will when we scan through them again, I never want to pick the best move again. I want to make the best move terrible so that we now look for what would be the second best move. So we'll never look for that one again. Then we set new list A, so we'll add to it list dot substring and location would be max location times five and then again max location times five plus five. And that is um, the best move. And then we set new list B. Now how do we get rid of one specific move? Well the way we do this is new list B is new list B um, dot and this time we use replace. Now there's different replaces but we'll just use the regular replace. And what we do is we replace this part right here um, with an empty string or a blank string. Empty is slightly different in Java. All right, there we go. There is our sort move very basically. Hopefully I didn't put in any errors. Now we have to use place our sort move somewhere. And oh, it looks like I've already done this right here. So right where it has your sort later comment, you will want to say list equals sort moves of list. And I could put it initially right when we initiate the list, but the reason I put it afterwards is because sometimes it will return on this line and it, there is no point sorting the list. All we cared about was the length. And so we return and so we basically avoid sorting, which is sort of a slow method in general. So I'll now run our engine run it now and look at that we're at 1.2 milliseconds um, before we we're getting 6.5 milliseconds if I remember correct so this is a vast improvement at least on my computer and it should be on yours so definitely implement this sort moves algorithm and uh, this is the last tutorial I look forward to doing a tutorial on advanced chess methods as well as all sorts of other tutorials I got an N Queens problem lined up and all sorts of other exciting stuff in the future. All right, until next time, enjoy Java.